What is up, YouTube? It's your boy, Tony Holiday, back at it again with yet another video. In today's video, I want to talk about the notorious, the infamous 808. And the best way to sample third party 808s in Logic Pro X. The 808 actually originated from the Roland TR 808 drum machine, where it has become a modern part in trap music, now even pop music. It went from being an unknown feature in the drum machine, now it's in just about every Billboard song you can think of. Before we get started, please go follow your boy on all social platforms. That's Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, Facebook. It's Tony Holiday. Let's open up Logic. I'm gonna show you the best way how to sample these third party 808s and really get you going and making those beats. Let's get into it. All right guys, so you should be able to see my screen here. Essentially what I did is I went and made a beat just really quickly, some drums here, two different bells down in this area. One's gonna be kind of in the higher frequency range, one's gonna be in the mid. So I'm leaving the low pretty open so that we can put our 808s in there. Obviously we have the kick drum, but that's kind of part of mixing where you can mix the kick and the 808 so that they fit properly in your mix. We'll let you take a listen to this and then let's start putting those 808s in. With the drums as well. All right, let's get right into it. The first thing that you're gonna wanna do, go up to the top here and get a brand new software instrument. Once you have that, you go over to this channel strip over here where it says instrument. And I actually like to do my 808s in Alchemy. With a brand new Alchemy slate here, this is what it's gonna look like as your default preset. You go to file, initialize preset. It's gonna open up this window here under advanced where the only thing that's going on is the source A is selected. That's with just a regular saw wave. Now what you're gonna wanna do, click this source window, import audio. This is gonna actually give you access to all of your samples here. Click my 808 folder. If you click any of these, you're gonna be able to sample them, hear what they sound like. The really cool thing I like about Alchemy is that even if they're 24-bit samples, typically Logic won't let you play them if you're in the finder window here. You can see if I go over these ones that don't have the 24B next to them, they actually don't play. But in Alchemy, it doesn't matter if it's 24-bit or not, it's gonna be uh, able to play there. Big fan of Nick Muir and all the internet money team. All girls are the same 808 tune. Once you have your 808 selected and you've dragged it over to the drop zone here, down to this analysis mode, you're going to want to make sure that you set sampler mapping. Make sure it's on pitch. Import. That's actually going to import the audio into our alchemy here. By default, we have this filter on low pass 12 dB smooth. We'll leave it on for now just because that's the default. I like to go over to this voices tab. I select the A source, this one here over here, and go to legato. That's because if we want to do any 808 glides, that's the way you're going to do that in alchemy. I actually personally like doing my glides in EXS24. I just think they sound sound better, they're longer, they're smoother. I don't like the way Alchemy does the glide feature, but with that being said, it's a small trade-off because Alchemy is so much better in every other sense. Turn the number of voices down to one. Leave our priority at newest. What that's going to do is make sure that when it is sliding into any 808, it's going to always kind of slide to the newest note quickest. Another thing that in Alchemy that I don't like as much as in EXS24, when we did select the instrument track, it only gave us the option to have the uh, plugin output as stereo. You can see that there is this stereo button and you can click it to mono, but I went and read on the logic manual on apple.com. doesn't actually make it in a mono output. It just made the left side of the mono channel work, which I'm not a hundred percent sure about that, but I like to just change it there anyways, because we do want our 808s and our kicks in mono. They are in the low frequency spectrum range. That's kind of the general setup of the 808 guys. Close alchemy and go into making this pattern here. For that, I'm just going to actually play the drums. Another really great tip when you are making your 808s, I actually like to make them in the higher range here on the keyboard. It's easier to hear the pitches. When you do tune everything down to where it is, that low hum of the 808, you know everything's in key. You're not second guessing yourself because you've already done it in the higher pitch where you can tell what it is in. I know this is in F sharp, so I'm going to make a little pattern here. This is something that I did in my hi-hat video as well. You want to make sure there's that these MIDI notes here aren't actually overlapping. What you can do is select that, hold shift and press forward slash, and that's going to make sure that each note has its spot. It's not going to ruin the attack of the next note per se. If we pitch this down, let's solo out the 808 and take a listen. So pretty simple 808 pattern. Now let's play this with everything involved. The drums. Listen with a whole track.
That's that trap 808 bounce. Now, a couple notes. I typically like to have all of my 808s with the velocity as high as it can go. Obviously, that's not a rule and you can play with it as much as you like. I find they always punch through the mix best when they are at the highest velocity. I also like to turn up the release a little bit if need be, kind of let it end out a little bit better too. Now, making your 808s cut through the mix, especially when you're on headphones that are not monitor headphones, stuff like in your car or just general headphones you have with like your iPhone or your MP3 player, stuff that's not meant to pick up really low frequencies. You want to use distortion. That's what's actually going to bring out those kind of mid-range frequencies. You can actually hear 808s when you're on less quality speakers, more or less. Typically, people will add a distortion plugin, but the really cool thing about using Alchemy, now back to this filter here. I actually usually change mine to this one, which is the LP 12 dB gritty. That actually gives you this drive knob here as well. Let's take a listen to these 808, kind of bring them out in the mix a little bit. As you can see, I went up to about 13% there. Already brought it to too much distortion. I typically leave mine between about four and seven, depending on how really crunchy I want the 808. This sample is quite distorted to start off. Be liberal with it, try different things. It's never gonna be a one stop. This is the plugin. You have to kind of play with it. And that's actually how you get good at designing sounds and things like that as well. Now let's say we didn't want to use the Alchemy natural drive, but I mean, it's already in there. So I probably would. You're gonna go to audio effects. You're gonna select distortion, stereo, play with the drive knob, the tone knob, and then the output you can actually kind of bring the gain down. That's what's going to help with you mixing in the long run. Check this out. Too much already. Drop the drive, bring the tone up, and then drop the output. The distortion plugin leaves almost a bit of a tail of distortion as well. That's why I like to use the Alchemy built in distortion. Another cool plugin to add some frequencies audio effects, exciter, stereo. I love the exciter. It's a great plugin if you really want to bring up frequencies. I use it for hi hats, and in this case, we can release it for 808s. I like Vocal Edge. It's a nice preset. Grab this little knob. You can actually just drag that along. Let's take a listen to the 808, and we can drag it to where we think it's going to fit best. Rest in peace, your ears. The exciter really, really, really accentuates those frequencies. I personally would still use the alchemy distortion as the way to go. Also a shortcut if you are trying to make beats quickly, you can bring up your side all files. And if you find your file that you want there, just drag it over which source you want. You can move to additive, spectral, granular, sampler. Do you want to go sampler in this case? That will naturally set it to the pitch setting is so it's easy for you to just drag and drop your samples. That being said, that's pretty much how I do my 808s in Logic Pro X. I love using alchemy because it's so easy to just drag and drop, pitches it for you. It sets you the whole pitch range so that you can do it in a high range and then bring it back down to the lower range. It gives you an in plug in distortion that you can use. Though I don't like the glides in Alchemy, you can still make it work. If you are just doing quick little 808 pattern, it's a really great plugin to use and it's stock in Logic Pro X. But yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you did like this video, give it a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe, hit the bell. Your boy's putting out more videos, getting a lot of great feedback from you guys, so thank you. Make sure to go follow your boy. That's Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, Facebook. It's Tony Holiday. Please see you in the next video, guys, and let's get it. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Cheers. Tony, take me somewhere. somewhere.